Hey everybody, Rhino here, the world's strongest pro bodybuilder and inventor of the cooler, the world's only cooler that holds a gallon of ice water and keeps your pre and post workout drinks all together inside one ice cold container. Be sure to check out StanEfforting.com for my new line of t-shirts, including the Rhino Raw shirt and this new one. It's just fitting for my rant today about Mike O'Hearn. If you can't be a beauty, you better be a beast. Ever since Mike O'Hearn and I shot some training videos together, it seems that everywhere I go, people ask me, is Mike O'Hearn on steroids? I got asked in Australia, I got asked in Germany, I got asked at the Mr. Olympia, the Arnold Classic, and every expo and show I attend. I get asked at my seminars and appearances, I get asked via email and Facebook, I even got asked again at the gym last night. Comments and questions appear on my YouTube and social media posts. People have done entire videos weighing in on the topic, and articles have been written in magazines. It's really become quite the phenomenon. Every time I get asked if Mike O'Hearn is taking steroids, my answer is always the same. I sure as hell hope he is, because he already makes me feel bad enough about myself. Truth be told, how the hell am I supposed to know? I don't hang out in Mike O'Hearn's bathroom. But here's what I do know about Mike. I know he was 270 pounds in high school. I know he deadlifted over 700 pounds when he was still a teenager. Other than his freakish combination of size, conditioning, and strength, I know Mike's never exhibited any of the other telltale signs of steroid use. He's never had a significant fluctuation in body weight. He's never had acne or been bloated with water retention. He's never ballooned up to over 300 pounds. His strength has never fluctuated significantly, and he's never failed a drug test. For whatever that's worth. Hello, Lance Armstrong. Look, I'm not here to defend Mike. Mike's a big boy. He doesn't need me swinging from his nuts. As a matter of fact, I spent the first 20 years of my career hating that fucker. 25 years ago, back in the early 90s, when I was pursuing my career in bodybuilding, Mike O'Hearn was already in the magazines. He was doing what I wanted to do, and he was doing it a hell of a lot better than I was. So, of course, I hated him for that. I can remember sometime back in 1992 or 93, I heard Mike was going to compete in the Emerald Cup up in Seattle. So I immediately started training for it because I wanted to beat him so bad. I used it as motivation for every workout, just like in Pumping Iron when Lou Ferrigno was yelling Arnold's name while doing shoulder presses. I'd amp myself up for a big set of squats by pacing around yelling, fuck Mike O'Hearn. Now I laugh at the trolls who get all butt hurt about Mike O'Hearn, but I was that troll 25 years ago. I just didn't have a keyboard and my parents didn't have a basement. I can remember at the Emerald Cup, I was pacing around backstage, waiting for Mike to come back into the pump-up room so I could mad dog him and try and intimidate him. Back then, the pump-up rooms had lots of weights instead of rubber bands, so I was back there loading all the plates on the bench, tossing weights around like I was at a powerlifting meet. Got so bad, my training partner had to tell me to relax. I kept waiting and pacing and waiting some more for Mike to come backstage, but he never did. He warmed up down the hall, and he didn't come back until right as we were walking on stage. So we're all up there in front of the judges, and I'm leaning forward looking down the lineup so I can mad dog Mike. And of course, he doesn't even know I exist, which pissed me off even more. The judges start calling out mandatories, and I'm up there grunting and sweating and hyperventilating and squeezing out poses so hard I'm about to shit myself while I'm leaning forward looking down at Mike every pose to see what he's doing. He was calm as could be, gracefully hitting poses and smoothly transitioning from one to the next, smiling while looking out at the audience and not a drop of sweat on him. When our class was done, we all filed off stage and Mike walked right out and down the hall. I can't even remember who won the show that night. I can't remember anyone else that competed. I can't remember what place I took. I can't even remember what exactly the year it was, but I sure as hell remember I beat Mike O'Hearn. I was pathetic, but it took me 20 years to truly understand why. A few more years went by before I finally realized that bodybuilding was just an expensive and time-consuming hobby and would never be a career. So I stopped competing in 1997, and I focused my attention on building my businesses. I'd all forgotten about Mike O'Hearn during that time. Then in 2007, I saw they were hosting tryouts for the remake of American Gladiators. So I made my way down to Gold's Gym Venice, and I entered the tryouts. There was a series of qualifying events, including chin-ups, ladder drills, burpees, and sprints. I'd been training hard again for about a year, and I was in great shape at about 245 pounds. The first event was chin-ups. And I got 30 chin-ups in 30 seconds, and I can remember thinking I killed it. 
So I asked the judge who got the most reps so far, assuming it was me, of course. And that's when he dropped this bomb. He looks at me and he says, Mike O'Hearn got 35. Now let's put this in perspective. You have to remember, I was 40 years old, then, a successful businessman running a $25 million a year company with 100 employees. I lived in a $2 million house, drove a Rolls Royce, and sat behind Donald Trump at the UFC fights. So you would think I'd be mature enough to handle this information, but you'd be wrong. The moment that judge told me Mike beat me on the chin-ups, there it went. Fuck Mike O'Hearn. Just like 20 years earlier, I paced around before each of the remaining events, trying to amp myself up by repeating my mantra. Fuck Mike O'Hearn. I actually ended up having a great tryout. So a week later, when I was back in Seattle, the producers called me and they invited me back down to meet with them. I thought I had it in the bag. I was in the best shape of my life, jacked and tan and ready to put on a show. So I fly down to LA and I meet the producers. They had me appear in shorts with no shirt so they could see what I looked like. And we talked for a short bit and then out of the blue, one of them says, do you want to be a gladiator or a competitor? Now I was noticeably offended by the question. The competitors on that show are typically a buck 85. So I said a competitor, I'm almost 250 pounds. I'm gonna be a gladiator. And then another producer says, well, you know, Mike O'Hearn's trying out to be a gladiator. That's where I think things went south for me. Because as you might be able to predict, I said, fuck Mike O'Hearn. I can kick Mike O'Hearn's ass. They never called me back after that. Go figure. Fast forward a couple years. I trained with Flex Wheeler to win my IFBB Pro card. Then I trained with Mark Bell to set a world record in powerlifting. Then Flex Magazine picked me up as a sponsored athlete. And early in 2010, after competing in the Phoenix Pro, Flex Magazine wanted me to do a photo shoot at Gold's Gym in Venice. You know, to generate some hype for the world's strongest bodybuilder competition at the Olympia later that year. So I showed up to Gold's and as the photographer and I walked in, he says to me, have you ever met Mike O'Hearn? And I said, who? He said, you know, Titan from American Gladiator. And I said, no, nope, never heard of him. So he walked to the back of the gym and there was Mike on the incline press with 405 on the bar, no spotter, training by himself. And just then, I had a moment of deja vu. Ever since I began training, back when I was in college, Gold's Gym Venice was the mecca of bodybuilding, a place where all the greatest bodybuilders in history would come to train with and learn from the other greats. I used to make the trek from Oregon to Venice Beach as often as I could, 12 hours each way, just to train at Gold's, eat my Bob Bullet Firehouse, sleep in my car, and drive home. When I worked for Gold's Gym Nutritionalysis, I would fly down there for training, and when I competed in the USA's, Training at Gold's was just as important as the show. Dozens and dozens of times over the decades, I visited Gold's Venice, and most of those times, I would see Mike O'Hearn in their training, typically in the squat rack with at least four or 500 pounds in the bar, by himself, no spotter, no posse, no camera crew, just grinding out heavy set after heavy set, writing down each lift in his book, sitting quietly between sets focused on the bar. This was the same scenario every time I saw Mike in the gym. Day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade. Discipline, consistency, and hard-ass work. The photographer introduced us, and the Mike couldn't have been any nicer. As a matter of fact, he'd be hard spent to find anyone who's ever met Mike that has anything bad to say about him. He's kind, he's humble, generous, sincere, he's positive and motivational. The kind of person you want to be around. The kind of person that goes out of his way to lift people up and make them feel better about themselves. He asked what I was training and I said deadlifts and he was all over it. He asked if he could join in and I said of course. So he stopped what he was doing and he helped me warm up. By the time I got to my heavy sets, Mike had damn near the whole gym crowded around watching. And I had just competed in bodybuilding so I was only going to try a 700 pound pole that day. But with Mike amping everyone up, 675 went up real easy so we just threw another plate on and I hit 765 for a double that day. Mike was more excited than I was, which speaks volumes for the kind of person that he is. Speaking of which, and I didn't know this at the time, but Mike spends many weekends visiting children's hospitals to help put smiles in the faces of sick and handicapped children. He's also very active in animal rescue and has helped many pets get adopted over the years and has adopted some himself. He regularly volunteers for charity events and he's traveled all over the world in support of our military. 
So when I say Mike O'Hearn, it already makes me feel bad about myself. It has nothing to do with how good he looks or how strong he is. It has everything to do with how disciplined and hardworking he is, how much he gives of himself to help others, and how he conducts himself. Well, this has really turned into quite the bromance now, hasn't it? But before the rumors get started, I think Mike's into fat guys, which is, I think, you know, there's something going on between him and Mark Bell. But that'll probably remain just as much a mystery as whether or not Mike O'Hearn's on steroids. To be honest, this rant isn't even about Mike. It's about you. It's about being the best you you can be. It's about concerning yourself less with what others are doing and more with what you're doing to achieve your goals. It's about what it takes to be successful. Steroids didn't help me build three different startup companies into multi-million dollar businesses. And steroids aren't the answer to Mike O'Hearn's success, whether he takes them or not. Mike's success is the result of many years and even decades of discipline and hard work. I know a million guys gassed out of their gourds who have never accomplished anything. If you really want to see what it takes to be successful, follow Mike on Instagram. He's up at 4.30 a.m. in the morning, training hard and grinding every day. Follow Mark Bell if you want to see what it takes to be successful. Follow Brandon Lilly. Follow Chad Smith. Follow C.T. Fletcher. Mike Rashid. Greg Knuckles. Follow Lane Norton. All of these guys work their asses off every day, not just lifting weights, but building their businesses and helping others achieve their goals. Sometimes I just want to be lazy. Sometimes I just want to eat bonbons and sit out back by the pool in my rocker, but these guys keep me honest about my level of commitment, about how hard I'm working. They hold me accountable. This is not a motivational video. I'm not Tony Robbins. And I'm not going to wave my pom-poms and cheer you along from the sidelines. If you lack motivation, I can't help you with that. That's your problem to solve. But I do have some tips to share. Number one, do something, anything. I don't care what it is. Stop talking about it and just start doing it. Don't tell everyone what you're going to do. Just start doing it. You've been talking about wanting to start a business? Start it. You've been talking about wanting to compete in something? Train for it. You've been talking about wanting to learn something? Learn it. Stop scrolling through your Facebook feed watching everyone else do things and start doing your thing. Oh, and guess what? This is number two. That something that you're going to start doing, you will fail. And from those failures, you will learn. And you'll become smarter and better and keep trying until you succeed. If you're not failing, you're not trying. Number three, you're not as smart as you think you are, which is why number four, you need to ask a lot of questions and ask for help. This is why women have a higher success rate than men for startup businesses. They're not afraid to ask a lot of questions or to ask for help. Number five, if you're listening to my rants, you probably already compete or train hard, which means you already possess all the skills necessary to be successful. I've said it many times before. If you put the same amount of time management, discipline, consistency, and hard work into any income producing venture as you do into competitive bodybuilding or powerlifting, you'd be a millionaire in five years. Think about it. The training, the cardio, the meal prep, the rehab, the reading and research into diet and supplements, the investment in coaching, food, travel, and competing, everything required to be successful, you're already doing it. And lastly, haters gonna hate. You can't worry about what others think. Look at some of the shit the trolls write on Mike O'Hearn's social media, or on Mark Bell's, or even here on my rants. There'll always be a bunch of do-nothings who've never accomplished anything that earned their PhD from the University of Google barfing up insults and advice on YouTube. Howard Stern's haters tune in longer than his fans. It's like Don King said, all publicity is good publicity. It means you're doing something. Don't worry about it. Success breeds contempt. Welcome to the 1%, my friend. Well, that's my rant, and as always, thanks for listening.